A warm greetings to all my beloved students. On behalf of the Department of Chemistry, Janssen's Institute of Technology, Coimbatore, I welcome you all for this video lecture on chemistry and you. In this video, let us have a glimpse of the relationship between chemistry and engineering. A pertinent question is being asked about chemistry. How relevant is chemistry to an engineering subject? In engineering, chemistry plays a vital role in material synthesis, which is the backbone for any process and technology. Here are a few engineering materials which we use in industries. They are sand, polymers, otherwise called plastics, composite materials, semiconductors, metals and alloys, refractories, fuels, and nanomaterials. Let us consider a construction field or a building where we use chemical compounds like cement and sand for construction, steel for making the building strong. We also use reinforced concrete for roofing, which is a composite. And for the protection of steel and its structure, various compounds called inhibitors are used. They are also called as non-corrosive agent. As we would have studied about the corrosion and its ill effects, chemistry helps us in synthesizing such protective coatings like paints, varnish, adhesives and non-corrosive agents. You could see how a plaster of cement and sand applied between bricks and steel and steel in reinforced concrete work. Computers is nowadays ruling the world. For making the basic components of computer circuits, we need elemental silicon which can be obtained from sand. Also for making a computer device, many materials like polymers, copper wires, soldering materials are used. If you look into these pic this picture, sand which is abundant in our earth crust called silica that is silicon dioxide is converted to elemental silicon which is used for making silicon chips for making many devices for the computer field like laptops and its components mobile phone and its components we are using the basic manufacturing principles from chemistry as we all know that elements are divided into metals non-metals and metalloids we know that metals are conducting in nature. This concept can be utilized in electric field for various purposes. Metals are useful in creating electric field, in conducting electric field and also in its storage. Various metals are used for these purposes. For soldering, we use combination of metals called alloys. We are also aware of different gases because of their special properties used in CFL lamps tube lights and many lighting devices. Also, metalloids play a major role in devising solar panels, which is used as a major power source for satellites. Solar panels convert solar energy into electrical energy, which is utilized in satellites as the major power source. Windmills also use metals and non-metals in, the constru in their construction, which harness wind energy to electrical energy. We know about fuels, lubricants, refractories, abrasives and many more materials which are used in various industries like automobile manufacturing, metallurgy, foundries, lathes and casting industries. Many industries are using coal as their fuel. In vehicles, both light and heavy vehicles, the petroleum fractions are used. Also, the petroleum fractions are used as solvents, lubricants, road laying materials and adhesives. Chemistry is also rendering its hands in synthesizing synthetic petrol, biodiesel, power alcohol, and also gases like water gas and producer gas, which are nowadays used as major fuels in industries. Lubricants are the substances used in industries to reduce friction and also the frictional heat. Lubricants like oil, grease, graphite, Molybdenum disulfide are used for general industrial purpose. Lubricants are used in many industries like general industries, food processing, trucking, rail, in passenger cars, timber processing, metalworking and marine. 
refractory materials. These are the materials which can withstand very high temperatures. These materials are employed in metallurgical process of extraction of metals from its ore. Refractories of various sizes and shapes can be synthesized and they are employed in furnaces like reverberatory furnace and blast furnace in extracting metals. Now, I am going to throw light on an emerging field of nanochemistry. Chemistry is very successful in synthesizing materials of nano size, that is, materials in the order 10 power minus 9 meters. Materials like nano lubricants, nano medicine, nano wires, nano crystals, nano tubes, and many more are being synthesized. Among them, carbon nanotubes play a major role in various applications. They are shortly called as CNTs. Because of this CNT's magic properties, they are used in 3D wiring, transistors, flat panel displays, hydrogen storage batteries, various sensors, actuators, and in their connections. Also, nowadays, these nano materials are converted into nanobots and they are injected inside the patients, which cures many diseases, including cancer cell destruction. Now, we should have understood why chemistry is an inevitable part of engineering and one of the fundamental field in engineering. I wish you to study engineering with strong understanding of fundamentals and prosper in your career. Thank you.